So if you've been following the channel at all, you know that I try to make everything in my house connected and smart. So it's pretty easy to do things like this. Turn the kitchen table lights on. You got it. Turning three lights on. But you see, I've got that tree sculpture hanging on the wall there, and it's strung up with LED lights, which I normally have to use this little remote to turn on and off and set the brightness. Well, a 15-20 minute project, now I can do this. Set the tree lamp to 100. Setting tree lamp to 100. Ah, pretty cool, huh? Or I could even dim it. Set the tree lamp to 20. Setting tree lamp to 20. Nice. And then this gets cool when you combine it with a routine, so... It's time to eat. Setting tree lamp to 100. So I thought that was kind of cool, but uh, before I get into the details of this, let me just give you a quick high-level explanation because it is so easy that you might not actually need to watch this video at all. You could probably just figure it out on your own. So we've got this little board here that came with the LED strip, and I took this and removed a whole bunch of stuff, uh, hacked in an ESP8266 board so that it now controls the transistor to turn the LEDs on and off and of course control their brightness and then the code running on this ESP8266 is just a modified example sketch right out of the Adafruit MQTT library so we're going to then of course talk to io.adafruit.com we're subscribing to one feed here and I created this one here called Kitchen Light and its value is going to be the brightness of that light from 0 to 100. And to get this to work with Google Assistant, we set up an applet over here on if this then that. Very easy. Let me actually open this up. So you tie in your Google Assistant account to this and your IO Adafruit account, and then you're good to go pretty much. So my phrase here is set the tree lamp to whatever value you want and that would be 0 to 100 and then the output here is to send that data to the kitchen light and that's it that's all you gotta do so now let's uh, get into the details here and how this works so the first thing we'll talk about is the hardware and just keep in mind that this is a 5 volt LED strip which is convenient for us because the trig board can accept a 5 volt uh, power supply input at its battery terminals. Not all ESP8266 boards can support this. Some of them are 3.3 volts only. Uh, and also a lot of the LED strips are 12 volts. So you might need to regulate down to whatever voltage you're working with. Now I would mentioned that I had to remove a bunch of stuff from this driver board. So let's pull up a picture of that. And by the way, here's an example of an LED strip. That would probably work. This claims to be 5 volts, but sometimes you never know what you're going to get. So let's pull up that picture. So I looked at this and powered it up and hooked up the oscilloscope just to kind of get an idea of how this works. So right here is the output. This is the barrel jack input. And then over here, there was a little like IR receiver dongle. I went ahead and removed that because not going to control it with a remote anymore. And what's kind of interesting is that this is a generic LED driver board. You see we've got R, G, and B. So apparently this can also control uh, RGB strips as well. There's two ICs over here. One is, I guess, like a microcontroller because it tied over to the IR receiver and then it somehow is sending commands to IC2 which then you see the three traces going out to the R, or to the G, and to the B. So this is just a PWM controller chip of some kind. And we don't need any of that because we're going to control it directly. So I just removed both of those ICs by just dumping a ton of solder on both sides and with a pair of tweezers, part came right up. It is actually a low side control, meaning that on the output here, the positive is always there at 5 volts we're just simply completing the circuit to ground with these transistors. Now I didn't know if these were n-channel MOSFETs or NPN bipolar transistors. I guess it doesn't really matter, but 
I see that we've got a series resistor right there, which tells me that this is a uh, an NPN transistor instead of just a pull-down resistor, which is what you normally see on the gate of an N-channel MOSFET. So either way, I didn't really care. So what I did, by the way, before I get too ahead of myself here, what I did do is look at this output here on an oscilloscope just to get an idea of what the PWM frequency was. And it was about 4 kilohertz. And it was just standard PWM, so that's going to work nicely with the output from the ESP8266. And you see there that I picked up the 5 volts right there at the center pin of the barrel jack. And then also right over here, which I found that the top and side uh, planes were ground floods. So that's my ground. And then right over from the digital output 13, I just hacked that right on to one side of that uh, resistor there. And not much going on on the trig board. So you see we've got digital pin 13, and that goes straight down to the LED driver board. That's all there is to the hardware. Uh, I don't think I actually have to mention anything else. So let me now show you the code. So like I said before, we're going to use io.adafruit.com for this. It's a free account. You're probably not going to get anywhere close to their, their free limits, so you should be good to go there. I also have used this for my weather station. And you see we've got a single feed there. I created a new feed, Kitchen Light, and this is the feed we're going to subscribe to to control the brightness from anything we want, from 0 to 100. So then I'm going to load up this sketch here. <laughs> Like I said, I'm actually just going to give this to you as is because this is just a modified example sketch right out of the MQTT library. So make sure you do grab that. I think you can get that from Sketch Manage Libraries. Let me just search this to make sure. Yeah, you can get it right here. So if you go to Sketch Manage Libraries, you can go and install this library and then you can go in and, uh, and, and uh, pull down the examples and play around with this. So all you have to do to set this up is you've got your SSID for your Wi-Fi, the password, and then from io.adafruit you need your user username and key. And you get that by going over here to view AIO key. And then it'll show you what your username and key is. You copy and paste that right over there and you're good to go. And then I'm just going to kind of scroll through this very quickly because it's already commented pretty well. And you can actually go to the Adafruit learning system. I'll put that a link to that where they explain how all of this works. I, I was so lazy that I didn't even change some of these comments. So then what you do is you can go here. This is where you subscribe to the feed. You'll have to change this to whatever you want. For me, it's Kitchen Light. And you can change the variable, variable names if you want or you can leave them alone. But right there is where you would change that. And then in setup, I do have a couple things I'll talk about here, but let me just kind of blast through this first. So it goes, it connects to the Wi-Fi first, and then it sets the callback. So once it subscribes to that feed, anytime it changes, it's going to call this function, the kitchen light callback function. And then in loop, we really don't do anything. We connect to it. We're going to wait for anything to come in. And we're going to continuously ping the server just to keep things alive. So if I scroll up to that callback function, this is when something changes and it comes in that value from 0 to 100 on variable x here. And I do a little debug printout of what it is and then make sure that it's between 0 and 100 because, you know, we don't want... Uh, we don't want things getting wonky on this thing and because it only accepts values from 0 to 100. Also, I want to save that in non-volatile memory, and I'll explain why in a second, but right here we just set, actually go and write that value to address 0. We're done with the non-volatile EE prom, so commit it, and then map the 0 to 100 to a value from 0 to 1023, pretty easy. Then we do an analog write on pin 13 with the PWM value, and that's it. Now, the reason for using the non-volatile EE prom is what happens if you power cycle or reset uh, while the light's on? How would you know what the current value is? So that's why I write that 
value there to the EEPROM so that on the next boot up or whatever, we can go and read that out to see what we were previously set as. So if I go to the setup, you'll see right here we begin the EEPROM and then the old setting is whatever we read out of value zero. And then I just make sure that it's between zero and 100 because even if it's your first time booting up, I don't know what that value is gonna be. So, you know, if the tur light turns on, no big deal. Just as long as the value is between zero and 100, map that over to zero to 1023 and then write it. Again, I forgot to mention here that the frequency we're setting to 4,000. Now, because it's an ESP8266, we can do that. So we've got 4,000 there for four kilohertz, and I think that's all there is to it. And then once you have that set up, uh, getting the if this then that is super easy. Like I said, you just get your Google Assistant or Alexa or whatever else you're using tied into this as your trigger, and then build your applet up. So you know uh, these, and if you don't, if you've never used this before, it's actually super easy. So if this, we could just Google, Google Assistant right there, and then say a phrase with a number is what we want, whatever that number is, and I'll just do this real quick. And then we choose Adafruit. Send data to Adafruit. Choose the feed name, Kitchen Light. Data to save will be add ingredient the number field from the Google Assistant. And you are done. Pretty cool, right? So now, based on this, it's going to be very easy to control lots of stuff around the house. So I might make a few more videos showing you to, how to do different things with this. But hopefully you fought, found that helpful and maybe you haven't seen it before, but I thought that was pretty cool. So thanks for watching.